So Walter, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the SAP family. Thank you. Thank you so much, Christian. I really appreciate you welcoming me and everyone else. It's been a great, great start. So AI has a big impact on business, but also on our private lives. Right. Tell me first, how do you use AI in your private life? Yeah, yeah great. So I think um, that's a great question, Christian. I think that you know, AI has been changed dramatically with generative AI. And I think that the best way to illustrate it is through the images that they create. So I like to play around for fun the, the text to image capabilities, like mm -hmm. you know, how you can just say a few words and say, I'm, I'm thinking about drawing a picture of a dinosaur in front of a Hollywood sign in, 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 in Southern California. And you have this very beautiful image. So it's very interesting. Um, for work and for just other business, I think the improved translation capabilities are really good. But of course, you know, coming back to business, Walter, um, I'm talking to many CEOs, CIOs these days, and of course, the topic of AI is top of the agenda, and everyone actually is realizing that it will have a big impact on businesses. Where do you see, where will have generative AI has been a massive impact on businesses, you know, from your perspective? Yeah, that's a great question, Christian. I think that there's been a lot of different things that generative AI can allow for. So I think these large models um, have so much more information built into the training. So it, imagine you having the German National Library and the Library of Congress together at your fingertips. And so um, knowledge information, I think, is big. I think being able to also get more detailed and um, replies with tone and, and, and feeling are you know, very helpful. People used to just take in keyword search yeah. and getting documents where a human has to interpret the documents. Now this generative AI can actually answer your questions almost you know, like a human assistant almost could. And so that kind of technology makes life a lot easier for businesses. SAP has a lot of interesting things or exciting, exciting things to do with AI. Why don't you talk about what we're planning to do there? I mean, look, the, the great thing is about SAP Business AI is that SAP is actually sitting between the end user, the business processes, and the great technology, the AI technology, so that we can bring that together. Because a lot of customers still have question marks, how relevant will AI be? And SAP Business AI is very relevant. So, for example, think about it millions of end users. I myself spend time on executing manual transactions like uh, transaction code FP02, million times every day actually perform to change financial documents. Or I actually was also then drawing a lot of numbers out to actually support decision making in the company. Mm -hmm. And now there is our digital co-pilot called Tool, yes. who is so smart that you can ask any kind of question to perform transactions in an SAP system, to do analytical reports and also give smart recommendations. For example, how to decarbonize supply chains without taking a hit on supplier costs or how to close my skill gap in a certain country, in a certain part of the company, where to recruit best and again, what kind of impact it could have on my financials. Yeah. Yeah. So that's very powerful. The second one, when you are using SAP software, everyone is configuring our software workflows to become more automated, to become more productive. Productive. In the future, we know it, we can now train our workflows with SAP data and non-SAP content so that the workflows can self-learn, can self-optimize. Right. That's the whole reason why customers buy our software to become more automated. So that's very powerful. But the second part of SAP Business AI is equally important, reliability, because when your data quality, when your semantics are not good, mm -hmm. the AI will also not deliver high quality. The authorizations, who can actually see what? Mm -hmm. The Copilot tool cannot actually send every kind of data or share any kind of data with everyone in the company. And it's also about data privacy. Mm -hmm. Where is the data going to? And this is where we already made great strides in the past. And that's, of course, also contributing now to AI around data privacy and the reliability. And last but not least, responsibility. I mean, the technology is so powerful that we, of course, also have to take care that we are applying it in the right way, according to our value, according to our ethics. And so we are checking the algorithms for being non-biased, you know, for doing good to our society, for help to improve people's lives. And this is also very important yeah, to be responsible and to impact our societies and, of course, our customers' business in a positive way. And this is why I'm actually so excited about the opportunity, the big opportunity for SAP Business AI in the context of our customers' business. So, Walter, a lot is happening 
Um, where, how do you see this continuing? Where do you see actually the next innovation in the generative AI space? Thank you, Christian, for asking. I know some, there's a popular saying that says, you know, predicting the future is hard. And so I'll give you my, my guess or best, best shot at it. I think there's a few areas I think about. One is, you know, transformer-based models. That's basically a generalization of what language models are. Um, can do a lot of things besides language. And I think that, as you mentioned a little bit about all the data that, that SAP has, building um, what are called tabular models or basically transactional-based models um, in large, large spaces. I think that's one next step of kind of how do you use transformers. I think in language models, people will just start to get to understand it better, be more comfortable, so there'll be more applications where things will become automated. If you think about the analogy of the internet, that's kind of how language models are changing the world. You know, nowadays, you would never call a, call a hotel or call a restaurant and ask, what are, your hour, are you open or what are your hours? You go to the internet and find out. Same thing with language models. Today, we can't imagine like, things that we would just trust and automate through lang language models that can save our time, you know, mundane tasks or very um, repetitive ones. And I think um, that would be another thing. I think finally, the combination of these tasks will allow us to get information transferred faster. So it basically democratizes information, both as the internet you know, democratizes information. Now, if something happens in, let's say, in, in, in the Far East, you and I will know here in, in Germany, we'll know in the US immediately. Uh, language models helping transmit information process information and make it easy to understand for everybody, I think would be very valuable for democratization of information transformation across transmission across the, across the world. So Walder, we are very happy to have you Thank as you. part of SAP. And I guess, you know, Gen AI will be so powerful for SAP Business AI because, you know, SAP is sitting at the nexus between the business and the technology. This is why SAP Business AI is so relevant. We are reliable and we will be very responsible. So thanks a lot, Walter, for the great dialogue. Thank you, Christian. No, really, I'm so glad to be here at SAP, just both, both because, you know, the great culture of the company and also just the fact that the leaders in business technology and adding AI to this, you know, improving the existing or adding on to the existing AI story will be great. We are happy to have you. Thanks a lot, Walter. Christian. Thanks. Thank you.